welcome and thank you for joining us again here at the Soulful Eclectic. I'm Diana Collins, your host, and I welcome you all with love, peace, and joy in my heart. And uh, I hope you guys have been blessed and living well and living your best life and authentic self since the last time we uh, met. So this today, this episode today, wow, it's hmm, part of the the first part, episode one. So I'm spinning off of that because this is talked about being my brainchild, right? And for anyone who knows me, my brain is um, just like the, you know, the title is eclectic. There's a lot of different things that float around in that thing. And um, I exercise that muscle quite often because I, I have these powerful thoughts and moments. So I thank you all for returning to, you know, sit with me and talk with me and listen and share with me um, these moments. But the the topic for today is how do we get here? How do we get here? Right? How do I get here? How did we get here? How did you get there? How? What what led you here? What what was your driving force to even be where you are at this moment or at the moment when you were last angry or the moment where you were your happiest. What led you to that moment? So that's what I want to talk about today because there are many things that can lead us to those moments. And just from talking and being with myself and talking with friends and, you know, uh, loved ones, I sat and we, we had this collective conversation about how do we get to be who we are today? And I told you everyone in the first episode that I am now starting to this journey on becoming an actress and now I'm a podcast um, personality, I like to say, I guess. And so how, how did I become this thing? And scary enough, it was nothing that was in the plans or... I didn't know it was in the plans um, many years ago. If you asked me five years ago that this, and you told me that this was something I was going to be doing, I would say you're a liar and something's wrong with you and go find that person you're looking for because it's not me, right? (laughs) But um, God, it is, it is. This has been something that I've been thinking about for years. I've been thinking about doing this before there was even a thing called podcasting. And it was just something I used to push out and say, hey, nah, I can't do that. No, mm -mm. who am I? Who wants to hear me? Who wants to know what the hell I'm thinking about, right? What I'm thinking about, right? Um, But people do, people do. Um, And that's evident by the people who come and share with you. That's evidenced by the people who tell you their most intimate details and don't know you from a can of paint right? That's evident by just being the person that you are on a day-to-day basis. So that is what led me to know that, hey, you know, something about you is worth listening to and it's worth putting out there. So here I am, right? So how do we get here? And when you look at your personal life, how did you get to the point where you are? Are you at the point where you're ready to just fly and just drop everything and say, I'm done? Are you at the point where you're ready to say, hey, I'm at my best life. I've done it. So kind of sit down and evaluate where you are at this moment. It's what I like to call a needs assessment, right? Or just an assessment. Assess your life, where you are, What do you want? What do you need? Are you at peace? Are you happy? You know, do you need a change? What do you need to change? And how do you feel like you need to go about that change? So when we talk about this, I I had this thought uh, because a friend of mine uh, reached out to me and was like, hey, I am hitting a brick wall. I'm arguing with my my significant other 
quite often and I just kind of got rid of everybody in my you know friends list because they're negative this that and the other what do I need to do and I just sat there and I I said you need to evaluate your life right take an assessment of where you are right who you are what do you want and what do you want to change and then once you've gotten to that point take that piece and say now how do I start making those changes what steps do I need to take to make those changes and then slowly start to implement those things into your new day-to-day -day routine so one of the things that I did was I looked at myself and said self what do you want to do are you gonna be a teacher for the rest of your life are you gonna be a nurse for the rest of your life well one thing I would like to share with everyone once you're a nurse you're always a nurse that never changes you that's just who you are it's it's not a job it's not a profession it's a lifestyle and it's who you are for the rest of your life so that would never change so I was like okay so what else do you want to do so I had this bright idea that I wanted to be a runway model <laughs> well um, if any of you guys know anything about runway models they are about a hundred pounds wet um, no offense to my friends who are runway models and um, they're about 5'7", max height, or minimum height, and um, drop dead gorgeous, right? And I laughed at myself, I was like, hey, you are none of those. <laughs> I'm cute, okay, yeah, but drop dead gorgeous, meh, let's not go there. But anyway, um, so I decided to just go out on a whim and take a chance. So I went to a local school here in Arizona and decided to say, hey, I'm here. Let's see what they say. They can either say, no, you're crazy lady or not invite me back or just say, hey, yeah, we want your money. Come see me. Um, so needless to say, it was here. I want your money. Come see me. And I was ecstatic. So I, you know, took all these classes and did all those things, but, and, you know, started this journey, but it began with sitting there and deciding hey what do I need what do I want what do I want to change in my life and um, I had no idea that's something I wanted to do and um, I wrote it out and it's been a journey and a ride all the way and one of the things I say is you know ride the wave wherever it takes you let it take you and if you fall on your face get back up I always call myself a weeble wobble. Uh, you can hit me, I get down, but I always pop back up, right? So be that um, wave rider, that weeble wobble, and just do an assessment, jump out there, try it, and if it works, great, and if it doesn't, hey, there's an always another step, right? There's an always another reevaluation. It doesn't end there, and that's one of the things that, you know, I tell people that reach out for advice, if one thing fails, it doesn't mean that's the end of the world or it wasn't meant for you. It means, okay, maybe at this time I need to reevaluate and uh, do another assessment on how, what piece did I miss or if it's even for me, is it really something I wanna do? It's not at always an immediate failure. So, you know, so that was some of the things that I talked with um, my friend about and it was helpful because it allowed them to have a conversation and talk about also what their partner needed because sometimes there are things that are missing in both sides and sometimes you just need to have a conversation if you keep it to yourselves you know it doesn't go far so have that conversation about work life marriage your kids um, yeah kids are a whole different episode um <laughs> I love my kids dearly they're um the driving force of a lot of the things that I do but uh if sometimes kids can pose a problem in life and in relationships and it's not a problem unless you don't address it 
then it becomes a problem. Um, otherwise, it's a part of life and you have to have that conversation. So I guess in a nutshell, it ends up with have a conversation. Conversation starts with yourself. How do we get here? All right. Looking back on the struggles that led you to those questions and then sharing that conversation with your loved one and say, hey, how did we get here? Because it always starts with self and then each other because you're in it together, right? Um, and then sometimes you need that outside person also to kind of be that middle person. So think about therapy. I know therapy is like this huge hush, hush, no, no kind of thing, especially in the black community. But that therapy is real. Couples therapy, self-therapy, whatever you need, because sometimes when you are sitting there struggling with yourself, trying to figure out how you get here, what do you need, where you need to go, it's and you don't, you, you're stuck and you keep hitting that wall, or you're at that plateau and you can't go any further, you, you know, for those of us who are into fitness, you get that plateau and you're not losing any more weight, sometimes you need help, all right? And it's not seen as a, um, deterrent or a sign of weakness to ask for help. It's actually a sign of strength when you ask for help because it's showing that you can be vulnerable and uh, reach out for something that you need, right? And that's where it begins. And sometimes therapy is it. So um, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of therapists of color uh, so that deters us from going out and seeking therapy as well. So that, again, that's a whole different conversation. But um, sometimes you just have to, to use your resources the best that you can. So if you can't find a therapist, then you go to your clergy. If you don't have a clergy, then, you know, you find that um, inner peace person that you can confide in and share. Okay, you have to share because there's no, you can't grow. You need that person to bounce that information off of and say, hey, am I thinking right? You know, am I seeing these things the way that um, it actually looks, you know, right on paper or in person or just in general, you know? And sometimes you need to talk about your relationship outside of the person that is in the relationship with you to get that um, objective eye on what's going on. And sometimes it's not just looking for advice. Sometimes you just need to vent, you get it. Um, if it's just a venting session, just tell the person that you're just venting, don't give any advice. But if you're looking for advice, then listen honestly to what the person is, is saying to you, what advice they're giving, because sometimes it's helpful. You know, and sometimes it, it, it will resonate with you, maybe not that moment, but some at some point in time, and then you can take that same conversation and maybe not the whole thing, but pieces of it and share it with your significant other and say, hey, I talked to, you don't have to tell the person's name or whatever, but say we talked and this is what we talked about and what is your take on it, right? Because again, you're not alone in this, in that journey. Um, but if you are alone in that journey, you know, you, you do need to reach out and share and be, at, um, find that person that's going to talk with you and bounce ideas off with you and help you or not actually help you, but, you know, show you that, Hey, you don't have to do this alone. You can have someone at your side walking with you as you are trying to figure out your next path or your path in life or just what your next journey is that's our, that you're taking. I like to call it like the amazing race. I don't know if anyone watches the amazing race anymore, but um, what is the next leg of your race, right? What's the next part of this journey? And for me, this is the next part of the journey, you know, starting the podcast, going out there and auditioning for for different things and um, and showing who I am and being my authentic self to myself. And it's not easy, by any means it's not easy. And if 
it, if someone makes it look easy, God bless them. But trust that for them, it may look easy. It was not easy. All right. Everyone's journey is going to be different. And it all starts with what is it that you need? All right. So with that, I just want to share that another conversation and it falls into the line with this one because it talks about that personal journey and growth and this person talked to me and was actually in a very toxic relationship and they weren't married they've been together for a few months and it just went south the person was uh, had a bad addiction and it just kind of kept going bad and my friend just loved 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 their partner and and it just was not reciprocated very well so we had the conversation okay do you love yourself yeah the same silence I just gave you that's the silence he gave me do I love myself yeah right yeah. says yeah I love myself if you love yourself, then you wouldn't put yourself in jeopardy, right? You wouldn't put yourself in tolerating a toxic relationship. If you loved yourself, you will look at yourself and see that being abused and mistreated or being um, physically, that's mentally or physically abused um, is not helpful to yourself so I ask again do you love yourself all right and that gives a whole different spin on it when you actually look at the things that you put yourself through and the things that you've allowed to run toxic into your life and then it's like no I, I yeah I guess I really don't really love myself if I allow you know, someone to talk down to me, treat me um, bad, hit me, those kinds of things. And it's not to beat yourself up because that's definitely not the goal, but the goal is to to recognize, right? It, it goes back to that first question that I asked at the beginning of the episode, how did we get here, right? That's where it starts back to turns right back to how do we get here then you sit back down with yourself and say how do we get here do I love myself and am I willing to tolerate this and then those are the questions that you start off with and those uh, and it will lead you to more no well you might start off with more questions than answers to begin with but more questions it's those are good because then if you have more questions, then it makes you dig for more answers and it clears up a lot, a lot of that fog that you've been living in and it allows you to see. And once that fog clears and you can see, then you learn, to, you'll see that you really do need to take more accountability of self and love yourself and put yourself first because once you start putting yourself first you learn that you tolerate a lot less and you won't allow that toxic behavior to fester in your life so yeah how do we get here All right so I leave you with that for the moment let that I like to say let it marinate in in your mind and then jot down ideas and thoughts and write for yourself how did I get here look back at your life at your struggles um, ask yourself those questions what happened in my personal life that led me here what happened in my work life that led me here your married life right what happened as I was a child growing up that led here let me to tolerate this type of behavior right and just start doing an assessment of yourself and then once you do your assessment of yourself assess your relationship 
and then from there see what you're able to unpack and unfold and then you know from there talk about it have a conversation with someone that you love and you trust and say hey this is what I learned about myself you know and now what are you going to do with it so with that I leave you with peace love and love brightness sunshine and you know the just know that there's people out there that care about you but you have to start with caring about yourself um so i hope that you know something that i said resonates and is helpful and please write subscribe email me um visit my page and drop me a note and hopefully we will see you soon and be well take care of yourself and each other and i look forward to seeing you again so like subscribe all that good jazz talk to you soon